Hello, I'm Sean Ditchko with the University of British Columbia Physics and Astronomy Department. In the previous video, we developed an understanding of what is random uncertainty and a couple of ways to estimate it, and we talked about systematic uncertainty and some ways to eliminate it. When using these measurements in a calculation, such as the area of this tabletop, the answer to that calculation will also have some uncertainty, and in this video we'll talk about the formulas and techniques you can use to estimate what the uncertainty is for a calculation. The uncertainty of the measurements, such as the 3 millimeter uncertainty we have in the length and width measurements here, propagates through the calculation to the answer. So this topic is called uncertainty propagation. You can propagate error either by using formulas, which we'll show first, or by using a spreadsheet, which I'll show second. Also, we'll see that often the uncertainty in one measurement will dominate the uncertainty in the whole calculation, which means you should focus your uncertainty reducing efforts on certain key priority measurements instead of squandering valuable time reducing error in all your measurements. There are two types of formulas for any calculation, a statistical version or a worst case version, and choosing which one to use depends on the context of your experiment. And this page here will show the formula for when you're multiplying numbers together. So consider the calculation area equals length times width. We want to know what the uncertainty in the area will be given that we already know the uncertainty in the length and the width. So we have the statistical version of the formula. There's the funny symbol lowercase sigma, which represents uncertainty. And I'll put a subscript capital A to mean the uncertainty in the area. That divided by the area result equals the square root of the sum of the squares of the fractional errors. And that probably sounds like a mouthful. So let me uh, explain all that in more detail. So let me just get it written down here. We have, uh, this is Pythagoras, by the way. It should remind you of that anyhow. We have the fractional error in length. This is the uncertainty in length divided by the length. So that's the fractional uncertainty in the length. We square that result, add that to the uncertainty in the width divided by the width measurement, and then square that result, add them together, take the square root of that sum, and that is the square root of the sum of the squares of the fractional errors. And this makes the fractional uncertainty in the area. And so finding the um, uncertainty in the area itself, the absolute uncertainty, in other words, you would multiply both sides by A and solve for sigma subscript A. So this is the statistical version of the error propagation formula, and it gives you the best estimate of the uncertainty in your answer to multiplication. It also is the same formula if you had division, by the way. Now, what's the alternative? Well, we also have the worst case version formula, and this is the uncertainty in the area divided by the area. This is the fractional uncertainty in the area, just as we had in the statistical version. But on the right-hand side, we'll instead add the uh, fractional uncertainties in each of the length and the width. So we have uncertainty in length divided by length, plus the uncertainty in the width divided by the width. And these are absolute values. These are make them positive numbers. Um, this Worst case version will give a larger number for the uncertainty than the statistical version. Where exactly these formulas come from isn't really that important. You can look up their derivation using partial derivatives in a statistics textbook if you want. What is important is knowing which one, the statistical version or the worst case version, you should use in a given situation. So if you need to know what the best estimate of the uncertainty is in your answer, that's what the statistical version is for. And you might use that when you're measuring, say, the mass of a molecule, for example. Whereas the worst case version is what you'd use if you're working within tight specifications. For example, if you're making a component for something else and it, your component absolutely has to fit in the device, then uh, like this electric motor, then you'd want to use the worst case version because you're, you're tightly constrained in how big your component can be. Out of interest, I'm also going to show you the formulas for uncertainty propagation with addition and, or subtraction. Suppose you have some quantity z, which is x plus y, and you know the uncertainties in both x and y, and you want to know the uncertainty in z. Well, uh, there's the statistical version, which is 
again, sort of Pythagorish. You have the uncertainty in z squared is the uncertainty in x squared plus the uncertainty in y squared. So really you're going to take the square root of the right-hand side. And so the uncertainty in z is the Pythagoras addition. It's called adding in quadrature, where you're taking the square root of the sum of the squares of the two um, uncertainties in x and in y. The worst case version, on the other hand, is where you find the uncertainty in z by adding the uncertainties in x and y. And these are absolute values, of course. It's making them all positive. These uncertainties are, are called absolute uncertainties as opposed to uh, fractional uncertainties. Just this uh, numerator of this fraction, that's absolute uncertainty in A. And uh, so for adding and subtracting, the uncertainty for the worst case version is the sum of the absolute uncertainties in X and Y to get the absolute uncertainty in Z. Now let's finally calculate the area of the tabletop. We have area is length times width and the length was 1.066 meters multiplied by the width of 0 0.763 meters and this gives 0 0.813358 meters squared. Now we obviously have too many significant figures in this answer, but how many we need to keep depends on the uncertainty, which we'll have to calculate next. The statistical version of the uncertainty propagation formula says that the fractional uncertainty in the area is the square root of the square of the fractional uncertainty in length plus the square of the fractional uncertainty in width. And so we'll substitute in numbers here. We have square root of, the uncertainty was 3 millimeters in the length, so we'll go 0 0.003 meters divided by 1.066 meters, square that, and then plus 3 millimeter uncertainty in the width, divided by the width of 0.763 meters, and square that, and this gives 0 0.00 4835, and there's no units on this because this is a fractional uncertainty in the area. Now, typically, what we really want to know is the absolute uncertainty in the area, and so we have sigma a over a equals all this, and we'll multiply both sides by a, and we get that the absolute uncertainty is 0 0.004835 times the area result, which was up here. That's 0 0.813358 meters squared. And this gives us the answer of 0 0.00393. And I'm not going to write any more significant figures than that because we already know enough to properly round this to one significant figure. Absolute uncertainties, or any uncertainties really in your final answer, should have only one significant figure, maybe two. And so, even though the digits go on to that extent, we're going to say that our absolute uncertainty is 0 0.004 meters squared. This means the final answer for the area, including the uncertainty, is going to be 0 0.813 plus or minus 0 0.004 meters squared. This is a proper way to write the uh, quantity with the uncertainty. Notice that the area calculation was rounded so that the least significant figure matches up with the same place value as the uncertainty. So this uncertainty has place value of thousands, four thousands, and so the area is rounded to the thousands place as well. Now for the worst case version of the uncertainty propagation formula, we have the fractional uncertainty in area is the sum of the fractional uncertainties in length and in width. So we have the uncertainty in length, 0 0.003 meters, divided by the 1.066 meter measurement, plus the 3 millimeter uncertainty in width, divided by its measurement of 0.763 meters. And this gives fractional uncertainty in area of 0 0.006741 and 
we'll want to know what the absolute uncertainty in the area is, so it'll be this number, 0 0.0067461 multiplied by the area, um, just to show you what I'm doing here. I multiplied both sides by A to cancel it from the left side, and now substituting in that area, that was uh, 0.813358 meters squared, and this gives an absolute uncertainty of 0.005 487 meters squared. So our final answer, as far as the worst case scenario is concerned, is that the area is 0 0.813 plus or minus 0 0.005 meters squared. You'll notice that this worst case version gave us a slightly higher estimate in the uncertainty of our area. An alternative way to estimate the uncertainty of a calculation instead of using formulas is to use a spreadsheet. And what I have here is a Libra Office Calc, which is uh, also the same as Open Office Calc, a free spreadsheet program that anyone can download. And uh, we have the length and the width measurements here, and then a formula to calculate the area. So I'm just multiplying these cells B2 and C2 together to get this area cell. Now we'll estimate our uncertainty by moving the length and the width up to their highest limits and seeing what the area would be in that case and then also adjusting the length and width down to their lowest limits within their uncertainties um, and see what the area is in that case. And then take the spread in this area, divide by two, and that'll give us a worst case estimate of the uncertainty using the spreadsheet. So this length measurement has an uncertainty of three millimeters, and so at the most, it can be 1.069 meters. And the width, um, same uncertainty of three millimeters, so 0. 766 meters and the area will be this formula which we can copy down by dragging the handle in the lower right corner and we get this answer for our area 0.818854 meters squared and that's the product of these two numbers and then in the lower limit we have 1.063 meters is the smallest the length could possibly be within our uncertainties and 0 0.760 meters and the area in this case is only 0 0.80788 meters squared. So our uncertainty estimate in this case then is going to be the cell D3, the high limit, minus the lower limit of the area. And we'll divide that difference by 2. And here's our uncertainty estimate using a spreadsheet. I should point out that with a spreadsheet, it's nice to control how many decimal places are being displayed. This is too many here. There should be only maybe three significant figures in each of these area calculations. So I've highlighted the cells and I'm right clicking and choose format cells and choose the number of decimal places. Let's say we have three decimal places. And this is not a problem for intermediate rounding in case you're concerned about using these numbers in a calculation such as this one here. This number is unaffected by the number of decimal places we display up here because the spreadsheet is smart. Behind the scenes, it is actually retaining all the decimal places that it can. And when it does calculations with these cells, it's using the full version, not this truncated three decimal place version just for, it's just for display. Instead, it's using the full, all the decimal places in the calculation for any other cell. So notice that our uncertainty here is the same as we calculated using the worst case formula. And so you might find this spreadsheet to be an easier approach than the formula. So let's write it down as you normally would. You'd write down area is 0 0.813 plus or minus 0 0.005 meters squared if you round this uncertainty to one significant figure, 0 0.005. And it's the same answer as we had up here. This spreadsheet method for estimating uncertainty is a perfectly valid way to doing things as an alternative to the formula. And it's in fact the preferable method to use if you have asymmetric functions. Now we've run out of time in this video, but in the next one, we'll, uh, I'll show you what I mean by asymmetric functions. And we'll use the volume of the tabletop calculation as an example to show that there are certain key measurements, such as the thickness uh, that are most important um, contributors to the uncertainty in the calculation. 
so stay tuned.